Call this meeting of the Conroe Independent School District Board of Trustees to order. Let the record show that a quorum of members is present, that this meeting has been duly called, and that notice of this meeting was has been posted in accordance with Texas Open Meetings Act, Texas Government Code Chapter 551. The time is now 6 o'clock. Uh, please join me in rising while Mr. Sanders leads us in the invocation, and then I will announce our special guests. Thursday, May the 3rd, 2018 is the National Day of Prayer. Dr. Ronnie Floyd, a native from Gonzales, Texas, is this year's president of the National Day of Prayer Task Force, and he is also senior pastor at Cross Church in Northwest Arkansas. The theme of this year's National Day of Prayer is unity. If you so choose, would you please join me as I read Dr. Floyd's prayer? Our dear Heavenly Father, while we come to you in complete humility, we also come to you with boldness in the authoritative name of your one and only Son, Jesus Christ, who is the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. In Jesus' name, fill us now with your Holy Spirit and lead us as we pray for America. O oh God, we are burdened for our nation today. We turn from the sins that we have committed against your word and your name. We turn away from our contentious words and ways towards one another that have led us to division and polarization. We turn away from our disrespect and our lack of dignity toward each other, and we turn away from our continual devaluation of all human life from the womb until the death in this world. We also turn away from and refuse to participate in skepticism, criticism, and cynicism in our nation. We turn away from anything that divides us and we run toward the gospel of Jesus Christ that is the only thing that has the power to unite us together. Lord, in this critical hour in our nation, we pray for unity in America. Only you can bring unity, harmony, and oneness in America. As your word calls us in Ephesians 4.3, making every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace, we ask you to empower us to make every effort to live in unity, to call for unity, and to forward unity in America continually. We pray for the churches in America to unify in Jesus Christ and to pray as one unified spiritual family for America. May your church pray for America passionately, perpetually, privately, and publicly. We pray for God's power to unify families, workplaces, communities, and the cities in America. By your Spirit, lead us to forgiveness, reconciliation, healing, and unity. We pray for people of all ethnicities and races in America to come together as one, living in peace and unity together. O oh Lord, because each of us is created in your image, Please give us the courage to stand against all racial and ethnic division, denouncing it as evil and sinful while simultaneously coming together in unity with all persons knowing this is God's will for us. We pray in unity for the security of our nation. We ask you to preserve the United States of America from the forces of evil that are threatening our lives and our future. God. Please guard our all persons in public and private settings from anyone or anything that desires to harm us or take our lives. Our future is in your hands. We agree clearly, unite visibly, and pray extraordinarily for the great spiritual awakening, awakening in America. O oh Lord, wake up your church and convict your people to agree clearly, unite visibly, and pray extraordinarily until the great spiritual awakening occurs in our generation. O oh God, we stand together upon your word in Psalm 133, 1, which says, how good and pleasant it is when brothers live together in harmony. In the mighty and majestic name of Jesus, who is our only savior and only hope in, his, in this world, we pray, amen. amen. Mr. Kidd is going to lead us in the pledge after the Caney Creek High School Navy JORTC presents colors. Lieutenant Commander uh, Luis Cortez, Chief Donald Arms, and then Ensign uh, Rodriguez, Ensign Blanchard, Master Chief Reyes, and Chief Rutland. Please 
join me in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Texas flag. Honor the Texas flag. I pledge allegiance to the Texas, one state under God, one and indivisible. Thank you again to the Caney Creek J Navy JORTC, Mr. Sanders and Mr. Kidd. Thank you very much. Um, item 2A, Special District Recognition of the Navy JORTC Unarmed Regulation Drill Team. Dr. Stockton. I'd like to invite the principal of Caney Creek High School, Dr. Jeff Stickler, up to the podium to introduce our special guest tonight. President Bush, members of the board, Dr. Stockton, I want to start out by saying thank you for the opportunity to be here tonight to recognize this great group of young people. I want to thank you for providing the opportunities you give our students to be involved in great organizations like Junior ROTC. These types of opportunities are what allow our students to learn things like teamwork, leadership, and character that helps them grow into capable young adults and citizens. At this time, I'd like to introduce Lieutenant Commander Cortez our Navy Junior ROTC Senior Instructor to present our students to the board. Thank you, Dr. Stickler. Thank you, school board, for giving us this honor. Uh, becoming champions has been quite an experience for my young ladies here who uh, now are getting a lot of attention. At the beginning of the year, we made this our goal. We worked hard. We, I still remember in the summer when we were practicing, Dr. Stickler, our new principal, came and he said, what's this? And he looked at us as we were marching. And he goes, they're pretty good. And I said, well, they can be better. <laughs> <laughs> and we did. We practiced all year long. And I'm very proud to announce that now they are the Navy Texas State Champions. <laughs> the team members, I'll be presenting each one of them, please come to the front. Uh, <clears throat> the team is led by Amanda Blanchard, better known as Sunshine. She's a junior and she's a three-year member of our program. <clears throat> the team members are as follows. Ashley Villanueva, she is the commanding officer of our unit and she is the only senior on our team. Delilah Rodriguez, she is our operations officer, and she is better known as D-Rod. <laughs> Crystal Reyes, better known as Ice Princess. <laughs> Caitlin Rutland, better known as Ginger. Laisha Hernandez. <laughs> Natalie Alvaranga. <laughs> Natalie is one of our two freshmen that joined the team and was able to pick up the steps and, and uh, get involved. So we're very proud of her and the other freshmen that did get, uh, step up and, and get involved. Natalie told us at the very beginning that she wanted to be the, the uh, commanding officer when she became a senior, so she got the nickname Code Junior. <laughs> <laughs> Next is Anai Batista. <laughs> Selena Ortiz. Annie De Leon. Mm -hmm. 
Annie is the other freshman that stepped up and got involved. Uh, she's a very quick learner. We've been very impressed with Annie, how quickly she picks up the beats and the new maneuvers and stuff. She's been very impressive. And last but not least is Rose Fowler. And the only boy on our team, he is the guide. He's the one that carries the flags, represents Caney Creek High School in a very dignified manner. We're very proud of him, Mr. Eli Berger. Item 2B, Special District Recognition, Students Together Achieving Results. Dr. Stockton. Okay, at this time I'd like to ask Laura Willard, our College and Readiness Specialist, to come to the podium and introduce our very special young people. Good evening, President Bush, board members, and Dr. Stockton. These graduating seniors are being recognized tonight for their participation and commitment to the Students Achieving Results STAR program. This is the ninth group of seniors to graduate from this very special program, and we want to honor them for their hard work and their persistence. Counselors were asked to identify entering ninth grade students who showed great personal and academic potential, but who struggled entering high school. These students were invited to join a four-year program. STAR builds strong relationships between counselors and their students. And these seniors tonight have made, made it through this, progressed through this program. The students were exposed to opportunities that allow them to learn more about themselves as they plan for their future. The STAR program has got, grown from a summer enrichment program to a year-round comprehensive experience. STAR students and their counselors hold monthly meetings. They visit community colleges tour technical schools, and even make four-year university trips. Students have visited job sites, they've done community service, they've listened to motivational speakers, and they participated in challenge leadership activities. This evening, we're honored to have four of our graduating seniors to share their experiences with you tonight. Alexis Sparks from College Park High School will speak first. Good evening. Growing up, growing up in school was always a struggle with us. Having to retake a test because we did not meet the state requirements or not being able to comprehend something in class. 
The STAR program gave us the opportunity to visit colleges and meet people to inspire us. Olga Sierra didn't have a clue what she wanted to do after her dad passed away, but we visited Blinn University toward the campus and she learned about the great opportunities to help her pay for her tuition. With that visit, she decided to go to Blinn University and major in nursing. For others here today, Lone Star and the military have both given us direction after high school. For myself, being a neat student since elementary school, <laughs> I, selected in, I, was a, I was selected into the program for my, from my junior high counselor. At, this time, as, at that time, as a freshman, I had no idea what I wanted to do with my life. After touring cam a few campuses with the program, we went to Prairie View A&M University that caught my attention. I found interest in the program and a degree that I would later enjoy to study. The following year, I got to accept, I got accepted into Prairie View A&M, a summer program they provided for free. Without this program, I would still have the same mindset as a freshman, not knowing what to do in the future. Our next senior is Rihanna Hilliard from Conroe High. Good afternoon. My name is Rihanna Hilliard from Conroe High School. I've been in the STAR program for two years now. I wrote the mission statement for this district program. This group has helped me so much. When we go on college visits, it's not just about getting out of class for the whole day. <laughs> <laughs> I was able to explore various colleges, got to see how college life is, learn about so many majors and programs they have on campus, meet students that actually attend the school, and the tours are just amazing, even though it's a lot of walking. <laughs> Last year, we attended Prairie View A&M University. I absolutely loved it there and completely fell in love with the school. When this, everyone was very friendly and it was very much diverse. When this school year started, I registered to take my SAT in October and applied to PV in November. Two weeks later, I received my acceptance letter. I will be attending PV fall of 2018 to major in criminal justice. I wouldn't have had this opportunity to be in this program if it wasn't for my counselors in the school board for allowing us students to be able to go on these trips and receive the information we need to further ed education. Thank you. Next up is Connie Pipkins from Oak Ridge High School. Hey, my name is Connie Mitchell. I'm a senior at Oak Ridge High School. I participate in the STAR program all four years in high school. Over the four years, the STAR program has shown me many different colleges, such as Sam Houston, University of Downtown Houston, Blanton, and Prairie View. I have also seen Lone Star, which I plan to attend for two years, then transfer to Prairie View, where I will pursue my dream of becoming a neonatal nurse. Thank you. And our final senior, who'd like to address the board this evening is Noah Russell from the Woodlands High School. Hello, I joined STAR at the end of freshman year. I didn't expect all the opportunities that would start to come my way whenever I was in the program. Some students don't have the opportunity or the time or the money to go to college or visit any college that they dream to go to. STAR is a platform for those students that have a dream, that want to pursue a career, that want to help others in their life. With STAR, I have seen many different types of personalities come together in one room with the one goal, and that's just to succeed. I, because of STAR, I have been able to determine my future, and I plan to go to Lone STAR for a year and hopefully get into Sam where I hopefully can become a teacher. Thank you. At this time, I'd like to, to uh, recognize all the seniors who were able to attend this evening. We have over 25 seniors in a STAR program this year from all of our high schools. And with us are also our tireless STAR counselors who, in addition to their regular duties, work with these students each and every week. So if you would join me now, STAR counselors and students. From Caney Creek High School, Cindy Orozco is here with her students. And tonight, we are recognizing 
Eduardo Hernandez. Next is the star counselor from College Park High School, Tammy Morrow. Here with her seniors, Akia Franklin. <laughs> Olga Sierra. <laughs> Alexis Sparks. <laughs> Andrea Villanueva. Our Conroe High, High Star Counselors, Tiffany Holmes and Ken Williams are here. Hold on. Uh, with, okay. Okay. You told me to watch. From Conroe High this evening, we have Rihanna Hilliard. and Cynthia Johnson. <laughs> Ms. Connie Hoagland from Hawk Alternative School is our star counselor. There are eight graduating Hawk counselors, or eight graduating star students uh, from Hawk. Unfortunately, they could not attend, but Ms. Hoagland is here with us this evening. <laughs> from Oak Ridge High School, Sean, our counselors, Sean Matlock and Rochelle Perry, are with their seniors. From Oak Ridge, Mariah Carey. Cameron Cook. Maria Gonzalez. Connie Pipkins, <laughs> Catherine Torres. <laughs> and from the Woodlands High School, counselors, star counselors Keisha Clark and Tracy Turner are here. <laughs> and from the Woodlands, again, Noah Russell. On behalf of the school board, I'd like to say just a few words uh, for you guys. Um, you know, to, to say that we're very proud of you uh, was, is, is a complete understatement. Uh, when I think about kids that are resilient, uh, given their circumstances, I, I, I think that you guys define that. There's a lot of people out here in this world that think, given their circumstances, they're just, they're just going to fall through the cracks and that's going to be fine with them. But you guys chose not to let that happen to you. And you're heroes. You're heroes to a lot of people. There's a lot of kids out there and adults that look up to you. They say, you know what? That person made it, and so can I. I don't know that you realize how many eyes are actually watching you, but they are. And you're very motivating, and we're very, very excited for you, and we're excited about the future to see what it holds for you and what you're going to be able to achieve. Because you've made it this far, nothing is going to limit you guys. So thank you very much. Congratulations. Well done. Congratulations. 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 Congratul
Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations. I know. Congratulations. Item 2C, Special District Recognition Ambassador Awards, Child Nutrition Department, Dr. Stockton. We recognize some outstanding young people. Now we want to recognize some of our outstanding adults. Um, we'll start with the Child Nutrition Department. Uh, we'll ask Director Robin Hughes to come introduce our recipients. Good evening, President Bush, members of the board, and Dr. Stockton. Thank you for recognizing our Child Nutrition Ambassadors tonight. First, we have Teresa Compton. <laughs> Teresa has been with the district for 10 years. She's the manager at Reeves Elementary and is very dedicated to providing great meals to the students. Her kitchen inspections have been excellent and she never requires a follow-up visit. She has a knack for training and works well with new hires. She helps other schools by sending employees when needed and she never complains. She always has a positive attitude and this carries over to her staff who all enjoy working with her. Teresa is well deserving of this recognition. Next, we have Catherine Matamoros. Catherine is the cafeteria manager at Wilkinson Elementary, and she's been with us for 13 years. She's done a great job this year by passing all kitchen inspections, and she keeps the kitchen running smoothly. She takes pride in her work and always provides the students quality meals. She has a great relationship with her staff and her students, and she's very patient. She's very pleasant to work with, and we're fortunate to have Catherine in our department. <laughs> Next, we have Ann Maldonado. <laughs> Ann is the manager at Cox Intermediate, and she's been with us for eight years. She's been outstanding this year. Aww. Aww. <laughs> she communicates with her supervisor on any concerns or questions. She trains new managers and has helped them become very successful. She shares her knowledge with her staff and helps them become proficient in their positions. Anne has great food quality and has good relationship with her campus administration staff. She's a pleasure to have on our team. <laughs> Next we have Dolores Beasley. <laughs> Dolores is an associate at College Park High School and has been with us for four years. She does a great job of taking charge in the kitchen she makes sure the serving lines are stocked and ready to go for lunch. She does a great job with training new staff members and makes them feel welcome. Dolores works hard until everything is finished. She has a great rapport with the students also. She's always willing to help other kitchens when needed and she never complains. We're very proud to have her in our department. <laughs> Next we have Connie Gray. Connie has been with us for five years, and she's an associate at Buckaloo Elementary. Connie always has a positive attitude that she demonstrates by her smile. She has excellent work habits and is always willing to learn and willing to put in extra work to get the job done. She's reliable and always follows through on job tasks. She's also very creative. She decorates the meal serving lines to reflect the month's celebrations. Aww. Her dedication makes her a true asset to our department. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you. 
I'm getting in here. On behalf of the board and the administration, we want to let you know how proud and how honored we are to work with you. Um, we are very dedicated, obviously, to educating children, but that goes beyond the classroom. We know that children who are not healthy and who are not fed cannot concentrate, cannot learn in the classroom, and that begins with you. Um, we are all about the holistic child, not just the education, but seeing that they are cared for, that they are loved, and that they grow into the best people that they can possibly be. Um, and without you, that would not be possible. You don't get the limelight. You're back there working and, and working so hard. And we're so honored that you have chosen to work with us and for us and for these children. And on behalf of the board, I just want to say how grateful we are for the job that you do for the children and this, the employees of CISD. Thank you. I think we all know who stole the show there. <laughs> Item 2D, Special District Recognition Ambassador Awards for the Transportation Department, Dr. Stockton. All right, we're going to recognize some, some more outstanding adults. At this time, I'll ask Sam Davila, our Director of Transportation, to come to the podium. Mr. Davila. President Bush, members of the board, Dr. Stockton, it's, uh, it's my honor to be here to recognize this year's Ambassador Awards. Um, well, we're fixing to introduce some special folks, but before we do, I'd like to introduce a few other folks in the back. A couple of my assistant directors, we got Juan Melendez and Eric Taylor back there. And also uh, Francis Karcher, which is our newest manager down in South County. So they make everything happen so all the phone calls get answered. <laughs> everything gets fed. First, I'd like to introduce, uh, it's a team. It's one of our special needs teams. It's Miss uh, Maddie Ruffino. She's one of our special ed drivers. And Miss Krista Coop. She is a monitor. If y'all could come up, please. Now, Ms. Rafino's been with us for a little while, but this is her first year to drive a special ed bus, and this is actually their first year together as a special ed team. And uh, it's, it's amazing the things people can do when they come together. They've, they've really formed a great special needs team uh, to help their students and help, help their kids on their bus. Uh, what they did was um, they had a student that, uh, this is the first year they ever rode on a bus. And uh, it can be a little daunting sometimes, and uh, they made the student feel so warm and so welcome. Um, they actually made some, percept uh, some items to help the student feel comfortable. These items were so well perceived with that transition on the bus is that some of the teachers started using them. So uh, it's amazing the things that they do and how much they care, and you know, all means all. And thank you very much. Uh, next, I'd like to introduce Miss Angie Abrams. Angie. Angie is one of our regular ed drivers from our East County Center uh, out there in, um, it looks like in Grangerland area. Uh, Miss Abrams has been with us for a while, but that has not deterred her spirit. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if I said that right or not. She is always there to help whenever we do anything for the department. Uh, matter of fact, we have our uh, picnic uh, coming up, and she's always there to volunteer and help out. She gives 110%, and she brings people towards her and helps us form a great team. Um, that's all in, all enough is well enough to receive the award, but uh, one of the things she did, she's very attentive as well. And at one of her campuses, when she was parked there, uh, after she dropped off some students, she noticed a student sneak out the back door of one of the campuses. <laughs> well, she was aware that that's probably not what they're supposed to be doing. So she called the school. She kept an eye on the student. Uh, one of the APs came out, 
got on her bus and they actually tracked the student down and brought the student <laughs> back to school so they could be educated. So uh, <laughs> thank you, Angie, for caring for all of our kids you know, and for all the other employees too. Um, next, I'd like to uh, bring up Ms. Uh, Patricia Patel. She's one of our monitors for our Conroe Center. Ms. Patel is new to us this year. She's uh, one of our monitors, but she's not new to special needs, uh, and she's bringing that experience with us. Uh, one of the things she does is she works with her kids on the bus, and, and sometimes the bus rides can be a little longer than we like, but she's made that time productive with her kids. Uh, to the fact of uh, once, uh, or one of her students, uh, she worked with that student to the point uh, where when the student got off the bus, um, she got to the point where she was able to progress and say, hi, mommy. Oh. Oh. Look at me, I'm all <laughs> Pinch me, sorry. Uh, so thank you, Ms. Patel, for caring for our kids and for what you do. And uh, last but not least, Ms. Ashley Mann. She is one of our regular ed drivers from Oak Ridge, our Oak Ridge Transportation Center. Miss Mann has a challenging route. When we say challenging, <laughs> we mean difficult. Um, but um, she cares about her kids, and that caring shows through because she always is able to uh, maintain uh, stability on her bus and make sure the kids are behaving like they're supposed to and get all of our kids home safe. Well, that attention to detail paid off for, for all of us uh, when she was leaving her school. Uh, she noticed a shiny object by the stop sign before she was entered into 42. She radioed it in. Uh, thought maybe it might have been a gun, and uh, uh, they called the officer at the school. They went out and checked out, and it was actually a pistol there by the uh, stop sign. So thank you for being so observant and for taking care of our kids. Thank you. I just had a couple quick quick words here. You guys are truly unsung heroes on behalf of, for the district. I mean, you guys are the first face that the kids see in the morning. And you're actually the last face they see in the afternoon when they go home. So it's, it's crucial that you guys are warm and welcoming and do such a great job. You truly are hard saying. I know those bus routes can be very challenging. You guys are trying to focus on the road and safety is priority one. I know in my industry, safety is priority one, but your cargo is, is a little bit more valuable than mine, I would say. So uh, we really appreciate all you do. We know you have a tough job, but you guys day in, day out, you do it and you, you do it passionately. So we really appreciate it. I know the district, all across the board, everybody, all the parents really, really would love to say and meet you guys personally and give you guys all the kudos and awards that you really deserve. But we often chance don't get that opportunity. We take you for granted. So this is a perfect opportunity for us just to show a small token of our appreciation. So on behalf of Dr. Stockton and the board, we really like to say thank you. We can't say thank you enough for what you do. You're truly unsung heroes on behalf of the district. I do have a couple of um, tacky ponds I'd like to add for you guys. <laughs> Mm -hmm. You guys, you guys keep us in the right lane. <laughs> you guys keep us rolling. Um, you guys um, get on, you get us going in the morning. You drive success. Uh, you're where the rubber meets the road. Um, you're one of the most valuable spokes in our CISD wheel, and we really do mean that. <laughs> and uh, lastly, but uh, not leastly, you guys truly make the wheels on the bus go round and round. 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 Appreciate that. Ms. Godfrey, has anyone registered to address the board? Uh, yes. The next 30 minutes have been designated for public participation by patrons who have signed up to address the board in accordance with board policy BED. 
Please remember that the board may not discuss or act upon any issues that are not posted on our agenda. The board has adopted complaint policies that are designed to secure at the lowest administrative level a prompt and equitable resolution of complaints and concerns. These policies provide that if a resolution cannot be reached administratively, the person may appeal the administrative decision to the board as a properly posted agenda item. Copies of the district's complaint policies can be found on the district's website. Those who have registered to address the board will be limited to five minutes for their presentation and delegations of more than five must appoint one representative to present their views to the board. Ms. Godfrey, please call the first person who is registered to address the board. Mr. Tom Chumbly. Has my time started already? <laughs> Okay, well, I'll just have to speak up here. Um, hopefully we can have a little fun with this. Uh, this is a piece of paper, and this is a pencil. This is just in case uh, Evan here needs it. Um, I want to do a, a little demonstration. Uh, come over here, Evan, if, if you need the piece of paper and the pencil. Evan is somewhat exceptional in terms of his uh, ability at math. Um, I'm, I've prepared just a couple of quick questions for him. Um, and we haven't talked about this in advance, I assure you. Uh, Evan, what is, uh, as quick as you can, getting um, within six de decimal places, um, what is 33 divided by 91? 3.362.63.73. Good, yeah, that's correct. Um, let's go with uh, 2,209 square rooted. What would that be? It's uh, 2,209. Is that right? I believe it's 49. Oh, I yeah. just gave him the answer. We can do another one. I think that's what you see. I wrote 49. Maybe I'm wrong. He's no, that so that's good as you can. So Evan, Evan's, um, not only can he do uh, some of these uh, things, go ahead and solve, please. Uh, I've got very limited time. Um, 47. Not only, oh, he is? Oh, yes. I was wrong. My apologies. <laughs> Me with a calculator versus him, yeah. Um, so he, he likes to do a lot of solving and things like that. He has a great passion for math and, and stuff like this. And he has conversations sometimes with a professor in, in math. He does research in math. And the uh, last conversation he had with him was something about why the Fibonacci sequence does something or other. That uh, His uh, abstract ability is, is really off the charts. At five years old, he was multiplying. Um, good job, Evan. He was multiplying trillions times tens of thousands. So. Um, he goes to Galatis Elementary, he, uh, and there's a lot of smart kids there, don't get me wrong. But um, as his parent, um, but also as a, as a social scientist, being somewhat objective, he is truly exceptional. Um, I say that uh, simply for this purpose. Um, uh, as his parent, I'm, I'm coming before you, um, the Education Code, Title II, Subtitle E, Chapter 26, um, under Section 26, Point zero zero three. It's it's dealing with rights and responsibilities of parents. So I kind of take my my uh, job, if you will, as a parent seriously. It says under this, it's uh, uh, under the context of petitioning the board of trustees, um, subsection three. It says that, that a parent uh, is entitled to request with the expectation that the request will not unreasonably be denied. Uh, subsection B, that the parent's child be permitted to attend a class for credit above the child's grade level, whether in the child's school or another school, unless the board or his designated representative expects that the child cannot perform satisfactory in the class, etc. It goes on. So um, simply, I am doing my due diligence as a parent to come before the board in accordance with this education code and simply request that he be able to move up in class. Uh, I know he's capable of more. Uh, there's a I don't know how much time we have left, but I can definitely show his abilities. 
Um, I have a, a couple of kids who went to College Park. He could do their homework. He's done, uh, he was tested uh, through a private tutor and they said that he should be on pre-calculus right now. He's doing fourth grade math. And this is boring to him, boring. Um, so that, that's all I have. Thank, Thank you. you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Item three, consent agenda. I have had no requests to remove anything. Seeing none, motion to approve. I move we approve the consent agenda as presented. <coughs> Second. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? All right. <laughs> Item 4A, consider approval of instructional materials allotment and TEKS certification. I'll ask Dr. Null, our deputy superintendent, to come present that item. Thank you, Dr. Stockton, Mrs. Bush, members of the board. I do feel like I need a nickname or a pun or a toddler or something to. <laughs> this is not a real. It's not a real exciting item. If you could come I up feel, with something. I've got the wheels on the bus. <laughs> I'm sorry for that. being unprepared. Uh, in that we'll regard. Give it to your wife later for some nicknames. Right. Okay. I'll work on it. Uh, the Texas Education Agency requires that the Board of Trustees and the Superintendent annually certify to the state that one, the district's technology and instructional materials allotment is used only for expenses allowed by the Texas Education Code. And two, for the current school year, the district has instructional materials that collectively cover all elements of the Texas essential knowledge and skills of the required curriculum. And three, upon request, the district will provide to the State Board of Education the title and publication information for any instructional materials requisitioned or purchased by the district's IMA funds. This certification must be done prior to submitting our textbook orders. Each spring, the district's instructional staff begins to compile textbook orders so that we will have books to meet the demands of possible new material adoptions, to meet the needs of campuses due to growth, to replace consumable materials in the lower grades, and to replace lost or damaged textbooks. Uh, all of this effort is led by an amazing leader in our district. I want to recognize her now. Dr. Tamika Taylor is our Director of Assessment, Evaluation, and School Improvement. She has a very big business card, and she is here tonight. Where is Tamika? Thank you for all of your efforts. And she has a great team that works with her, a, a campus or a district-wide uh, committee that does that work. So at this time, we would ask that you would approve the instructional materials allotment and Texas Essential Knowledge and Skills certification for the 2018 and 2019 school year. So moved. Second. All right. Any discussion, questions? All those in favor? Thank you. Yeah. Item 5A, consider approval of campus mascot and school colors for Katherine Johnson Clark Intermediate School. All right, Debbie Phillips, if you'll come present that item, please. Good evening, Dr. Stockton, President Bush, members of the board. Last month I was here and we debuted the new mascot and colors for Katherine Johnson Clark Intermediate. As you recall, our principal, Lindsay Argeron, sent out a survey to our future families and we had around 300 responses submitted. We narrowed the choices down and kind of whittled it down to this cute little guy, our Clark Cub, with colors being blue and orange. Since last month, we've received very positive feedback, including a two thumbs up from Katherine Johnson Clark herself. And uh, so tonight we seek your approval for the Clark Intermediate mascot and colors. I have a motion. Second. Motion. I'll second it. All right. Any discussion? All those in favor? Thank you. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Item uh, 5B, receive capital improvements update. Mr. Foster, if you'll come present that item, please. Good evening, President Bush, members of the board, and Dr. Stockton. It's my pleasure to bring you an update on our capital improvements we have underway throughout the district. Starting with Grand Oaks High School. Grand Oaks is scheduled to open in August of 2018. I'm happy to report it is on schedule. Uh, as you can see from the overhead photo here, the uh, site work is beginning to clean up quite nicely, so the, all the details around the site are nearing their completion. Next month you'll get to see pictures of green grass growing in the front yard, things of that nature, so it is uh, approaching completion very rapidly on the exterior of the building. 
On the interior of the building, this is a picture of one of our art labs in the spaces. So the, the academic area <coughs> is the first area of the building to be completed. So you're seeing seeing the colors, seeing the finish, seeing the floors, things of that nature. And we've been working diligently with our purchasing department to stock the furniture in that building so it can be easily deployed uh, as we finish that building. At Catherine Johnson Clark Intermediate, that school is also scheduled to open in August of 2018. I have to report it is also on schedule. The exterior of that building is worked around to focus at the front door. This is a picture of the front entry. And soon it will look like the rendering that was just up in Dr. Phillips' presentation a few moments ago. Over the next several weeks, the uh, masonry work around the front door will be completed and we'll be moving uh, all our efforts toward the inside and cleaning up that site. On the inside, you can see the finishes, ceiling grid, light fixtures, power, permanent. the permanent parts of that building are in place. We've been working this week to start the air conditioning systems. So by the end of next week, the building should be under conditioned air, which is what we need to apply paint, install cabinets, and all the other things that uh, need a you know, humidity-controlled environment in. Uh, same picture from last week, or last month, rather, but now you get to see some of the fixtures being installed. So uh, and like I said before, the project is on schedule and progressing as uh, just as we had planned. Our life cycle 2018 project, last month we talked about the good work we did over the spring break. Uh, now our focus is turning towards moving to the next break. So our, our big focus for the next uh, probably six weeks or so is uh, revamping the air conditioning systems at our natatorium. So this is just a picture of the mechanical yard on the east side of that building, which we've been working in preparing to receive the new uh, mechanical equipment to replace the equipment that's reached the end of its life uh, for that building. In addition to this, we've been already been to many places, which you saw pictures last month, or a, a picture last month. Next month, uh, we'll see some more uh, more pictures, more work. But by the end of the summer, we will have touched 31 campuses with this project. Moving on to our stadium school board replacement projects, you can see here this is Wood Forest Stadium where we have dismantled the uh, existing school board at that at that campus or at that stadium. Uh, we'll do the same work at Moorhead Stadium in the next couple of weeks. We're adding additional structure to make a school board larger, uh, so Moorhead and Wood Forest will look the same except for the title of those uh, camp, uh, each stadium uniquely. But what we're going to see here, what you've got is a, a rendering of what the school board will look like when it's finished. Awesome. Nice. Uh, and a uh, representation of what our current video screen is <laughs> and what the video screen wow. will be when it's done. Just to remind you, back uh, 10 years ago, that was the largest video screen in the Houston area. <laughs> Moving on to Flex 19, this is an elementary school off of 242 in our Oak Ridge feeder zone. Uh, I'm happy to report it is on schedule. It's scheduled to open in August of 2019. You can see from this picture we've been working on the site, uh, specifically clearing, moving, drying, getting, getting it ready for the building pad construction, which will start in earnest on Thursday of this week. Uh, and over the next several weeks we'll get that building up out of the earth and start seeing the foundation work and things like that as we're moving that building forward. At Austin Elementary, the addition and renovation project, where we're uh, replacing parts of that building that have reached the end of their life. Uh, you can see here, this is the detention pond, which we constructed on the additional acreage that we purchased not just a few months ago. Uh, this was phase one of that campus, where we had to get somewhere for all the stormwater to go so that we can build the new building addition behind it. So over the next several weeks, we'll be working on the building pad for the new building and getting those infrastructures set up so that I can show you some interesting pictures of that construction project over the next several weeks or several months. We're scheduled to be on that site through uh, the summer of 2019, and it is currently on schedule. <clears throat> Irons Junior High School, this is where we're doing a classroom addition. Uh, we're adding classrooms to this campus to help uh, the capacity at Irons Junior High. We've been working for the past month in the ground, doing the foundations, the plumbing on the ground, things of that nature for that building. Uh, I'm happy to report it is on schedule, and our intention is to turn it over for use over the Christmas break uh, this year so that the spring of 2019 it will be available for our students. Our new junior high school, which is in the Conroe feeder zone on our 186-acre site, which is uh, where Bosman and Patterson currently are, uh, we don't have any good pictures here because we've been working diligently with the city on tree preservation areas, putting up fence around trees to comply with their tree ordinance. Uh, we feel like we are very near the end of that process so that we will 
begin to clear our site for the building uh, over the next week or so. At Conroe High School, where we're doing an addition to that building in order to facilitate the renovation of the mechanical systems for the main campus. The building addition is on schedule, and it, it, just like Irons, it's scheduled to turn over uh, mid-year so that we can move students in, in the spring of 2019. Um, you're looking here at the, at the entry corner of this building, so the exterior masonry, the exterior components of that building to get it in a dry condition are moving along rapidly. On the interior of the building, you're seeing the masonry uh, block work for the common areas, the corridors, creates classrooms, things of that nature. The building systems are going in place. Uh, you've seen pictures over the last several months of our central plant. Those items are in place and ready uh, and staged, so when this building comes online, we'll start to bring the campus online with it. And that is our update. Thank you, Mr. Foster. <laughs> Item 5C. Consider selecting job order contracting as the procurement method for the 2018 Summer Kitchen Renovations Project and GTT Inc. as the vendor to provide the material services for this project and authorize the superintendent to negotiate and execute any documents necessary. This is a long title because we're actually yes. approving a couple of items. One is the contracting method and the second is the actual work to be done. So at this time, I'm requesting your approval of the contracting method of job order contracting uh, because in order to be compliant with our own board policy, this is a, a different method than we're uh, you, uh, normally use for jobs of this size. <coughs> We've been working with our purchasing department or had worked with our purchasing department to create a job order contracting program, which creates a pool of general contractors that can be used for intermediate, small and intermediate sized projects. We're in year two of that program, and that allowed us to select GTT for this work. GTT has helped us by putting a proposal together for a 2018 summer kitchens renovations project, which will allow us to re, uh, renovate the serving lines at Gladys, or not Gladys, at Anderson, Giesinger, and Bush Elementary. We're also doing some freezer cooler upgrades at a couple of those campuses, some equipment upgrades at two of those campuses, and then creating some storage areas at, at some of those campuses. GTT's proposal for this work is $799,860, and we're requesting your approval of both the contracting method and then the uh, amount of the work so that we can proceed. A motion? All right, any discussion? Questions? I would like to know what, explain the, the, the process, okay? Why, why is it, was it chosen for this? because it's more expensive to run a complete RFP or yeah, this that, size job? Yeah, one of, the, one of the benefits of having a job order contract pool is the, the RFP has already been done, qualifications have already been met, uh, and it comes with a pricing guide so that we know what the maximum amount for any particular scope of work is, and so this allows us to move very quickly and save those additional advertising dollars on individual projects. Thank you. Thank you. Anything else? All those in favor? Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Foster. Thank you. Item 6A, consider <clears throat> approval of the 2018-19 Employee Group Health Program. Dr. Stockton. Okay, I'll invite Darren Rice, our Chief Financial Officer, to come present the next uh, three items. Good evening, President Bush, members of the board, and Dr. Stockton. It is my pleasure to recommend to the board to approve the employee medical coverage rates and plan design for the self-funded health insurance program. The Employee Benefits Committee voted with an overwhelming majority to recommend the medical coverage rates and plan designs to the board. I would like to thank the Employee Benefits Committee, Dr. Kathy Sharples, Paula Green, Tiffany Matfeld, and the district's health insurance consultant, Mr. Terry Brown, for their hard work on the district's health insurance program. If you're in attendance, uh, would anybody stand up and be recognized? Some of the com committee, committee members are a little nervous. Um, <laughs> One of them uh, refused to stand up. <laughs> <laughs> the district's self-funded group health insurance program was restructured for 2014-2015, and annual adjustments have been made throughout subsequent years to provide a quality health plan at reasonable cost to the district employees. Once again, due to the continued rise of medical and prescription drug costs of 9.6% and 11.6% respectively, the plan must again be modified to remain sound. 
Medical plan designs are recommended for change along with premium increases for the 2018-2019 plan year. CISD believes all of its plans will continue to be offered at competitive rates, particularly the Aetna Whole Health, Health Health Plan, which utilizes the Memorial Hermann ACO and the Aetna Select Networks. If the plan changes are approved, the total projected health plan cost will be $48.9 million, which is a 2.59% increase over the previous year, with the district funding 58% of the health plan cost and employee premiums funding the remaining 42%. Recommended premiums and plan designs compare favorably to our peer districts and the current TRS plans. Within the Aetna Hold Health Plan, we are recommending an increase in the emergency room cost from $350 copay to a $200 copay and 20% coinsurance, and a slight increase in, to the annual deductible in the Aetna Select Plan or Tier 2. And this change will continue to steer employees to our best performing plan, which is the Memorial Hermann ACO or Tier 1. The recommended plan design includes changes to the high deductible plan to make it more competitive and provide employees with another medical insurance option. This plan allows CISD to meet the ACA affordability requirements. Uh, Mr. Terry Brown is here tonight to answer any questions the board may have. And at this time, I recommend your approval. So moved. I second the motion. All right. Any questions? Any discussion? I know we already went over a lot of this in great detail at our workshops. So. Mm -hmm. All right, all those in favor. Thank you, Mr. Rice. Item 6B, consider approval of the 2018-19 teacher hiring schedule, employee raises and stipends. Mr. Rice. All right, tonight I'm recommending the Board of Trustees approve the 2018-2019 teacher hiring schedule, employee raises and stipends. CISD administration believes that it is beneficial to approve the teacher hiring schedule, employee raises and stipends early in the budget process. We believe that early approval will improve employee recruitment and retention. The attached proposal was recommended by the TASB Compensation Group. It includes a 2.5% general pay increase on the midpoint for professional staff and a 3% general pay increase on the midpoint for non-exempt staff. CISD administration believes that this proposal will keep CISD competitive with peer school districts in the Houston area. Under, under this plan, the starting teacher salary is $53,700. Existing teachers receive a salary increase of $1,450 next year. And total teacher salaries will increase by approximately $5.6 million. Non-teacher salary increases total approximately $3.7 million. At this time, I recommend your approval. I move we approve as presented. Second. We have a you second. have some discussion items, though. Yeah. Yes. The yes. Uh, under general pay increase, it says 2.0 percent on the chart. The blue bar says 2.5. The, the white yeah. bar says 2.0. So yeah, it, it is 2.5. Yes. Awesome. Okay. All right. All right. <laughs> you got it. You got it. Had to <laughs> had to make sure of that. Yes. Anything else? All those in favor? Thank you, Mr. Rice. You. Item C: Financial reports. What number of the 14? Give me the base on the 14, on the um, 2.5% to get the 1450. What is the what base salary? What was the average? What was the dollar amount? Oh, what what did they use? I, I'm not. I do. I don't have that number in the top of my head. I'll, I can get that for you. So that 1450 is the two and a half percent. Yes, it is on the midpoint for the, for that group, but I okay. I don't I don't have that information. Okay. It's on the mid. Yeah. Yes, I'm here this evening to present the financial statements of the district for the month of March. Uh, these statements will include the general fund, debt service fund, child nutrition, and self-funded insurance. The first statement we'll look at this evening is our balance sheet for the month. Our balance sheet includes our assets, liabilities, and fund balances. Each month, we like to look at our cash and investments. And our cash and investments for the month will concentrate here on the general fund. We have cash on hand, $500. We have bank deposits of $354,000. We have investments in our state pools of $176 million, 
We have short-term investments that are less than a year of 89 million, and our longer-term investments with TCG Investment Advisors of 52.1 million dollars for total cash and investments of 317.4 million dollars. We always like to look at our property tax collections this time of year, and our progress is good. We uh, we're ahead of where we were last year, so we feel very confident where we are this year. This is our income statement. Our income statement includes our revenues and expenditures. Our revenues are broken down into three categories. They include local and intermediate sources, state program revenues, and federal program revenues. And looking at our local and intermediate sources of revenues, our uh, property taxes are the largest generator of revenues in our general fund and debt service fund. It's food sales and food service, and it's premium contributions and self-funded insurance. And we can always look at our expenditures by major category. <laughs> the wheels on the bus go. Manager makes financial I think someone snuck into his office. <laughs> Somebody had fun with PowerPoint this month. <laughs> I'm glad it took off that way. <laughs> As you can see in the general fund, the largest expenditure is payroll and debt service. It is debt service. Child nutrition, it supplies materials and contracted services and self-funded insurance. Projected fund balance in the general fund uh, is projected to increase $2 million after we implemented our $8 million increase uh, for the Iron Junior High edition mm -hmm. and the school boards. I've got to, show, they want me to click on all these because they, they show them. And this just kind of shows the breakdown of, of, of that. And the projected fund balance increase in child nutrition is increasing about $798,000. Our 2015 bond referendum status <coughs> update, we've currently expended and encumbered $432.1 million. We have an estimate to complete of about $93.4 million. Uh, leaving us with a total project forecast of $525.5 million, and that does include $41.4 million that the board has transferred from the general fund uh, to the debt service, I mean to the uh, capital projects fund. Self-funded insurance. Self-funded insurance continues to perform well. Uh, we have total revenues of a little over $28 million. We have total expenses currently of $24.4 million, leaving us with revenues over expenses of $3.6 million. Uh, participation in our wellness centers continues to be strong. Uh, for the year, we're averaging 543 a month. Investments for the month, par value of $650 million at the end of March. <clears throat> our pools are yielding 1.72%. Our shorter term investments, once again, less than a year, 1.8%. Longer term investments with TCG Investment Advisors, 1.43%, leaving us with a combined for portfolio with a weighted average maturity of 58 days, yielding 1.71%. And our benchmark, the 90 day T bill, is at 1.69%. Mm. <laughs> Mr. Rice, I know uh, you and I, if you could pull that last slide back up. I have a, a question. Or, I know you and I have had a, <laughs> sorry there. about that. There you go. I know you and I have had some discussions about mm -hmm. TCG. I'm, I'm just not real pleased with their performance here. And I know it was longer term, and mm -hmm. I know that the rate curve has shifted somewhat. Mm -hmm. And I know that as some of those investments reach their maturities, they're reinvesting them, hopefully, uh, at a higher rate, but I'd like for us to take a look at that. It, 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 I mean, I, I just think we can do better than that. Yes, sir, and, 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 and as I discussed with you, I have challenged them to, yes. to come up with a plan to increase that rate, and they are working on a strategy to bring okay. to us uh, to increase that rate of return. Okay. When do you think we'll have an answer back from them? I'm, I'm hoping in the next couple of weeks. Okay. They, 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 they're supposed to be coming up with a strategy okay. for that. I, I, I know at our investment committee, we'll, mm -hmm. this will have, that That will be an item of discussion I'd like to bring mm -hmm. up with them. Agreed. Yeah. All right, thank okay. you. you know, Mr. Rice, I, I, yes, like, I'd just like to say you guys are doing a fantastic job, and we take for granted the um, animation you put in this presentation. <laughs> but it's, 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 it's outstanding when you can have the luxury to put animation in presentation. I've had to present financials, and if animation was in some of those financials, they were so poor, I'd have got fired. <laughs> it came across as extremely sarcastic. So I think, I truly think the district is blessed, and 
yes, the financial sir. position that we have and the and the actions you guys are taking to maintain that financial position that we have. So great job. Thank you, sir. Thank you. I do want to clarify one thing too. When you approve the teacher and hire schedule, you also approve the stipend schedule yes. too. That, that was in our board vote. Yes, yes sir. Um, item, I know that we do not need an executive session tonight, so we are going to go straight to item 9A, consider approval of superintendent employment contract for Dr. Knoll. Ms. Gladys. Thank you, President Bush. Did you know the contract with the new superintendent is the culmination of your superintendent search that you have been uh, working through this year? And so the contract that you're familiar with is being presented to you for approval tonight. It sets out, of course, as you know, the obligations of both the district and Dr. Nall, and um, is a standard employment contract for a superintendent. All right. Do I have a motion to approve? Absolutely. All right. <laughs> Any di further discussion? Do we want to make him sweat a little bit longer? No. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Only because his wife's here. <laughs> All those in favor? Motion passes. It is official, Dr. Right, Knoll. Right. Last item on the agenda, item 9B, consider approval of the land lease agreement with Montgomery County for the use as an agricultural education center. Ms. Gladys. Thank you again, Mrs. Bush. We're um, very pleased to bring this item to you tonight. Um, we've been working on it for quite some time. And um, this uh, lease with the county, who um, the Commissioner's Court did approve it on March 20th, and we're very appreciative of them, and particularly of the role that Commissioner Mike Metter played in, in seeing this to fruition, allows the district to um, lease for 40 years at the uh, rate of $10 per year. 6.6 acres of land are on the Lone Star Convention Center for us to build ag facilities on that will serve students at Connor High and Caney Creek. And so we're looking forward to getting that underway and um, again, extend our great thanks to the county and commissioner um, uh, Metter for his help with that. Good job. Do I have a motion? So <laughs> Second. All right, any discussion? All those in favor? Motion passes. Good job. Thank you to all those who were involved in that. Yeah, yes. it's a wonderful thing. <laughs> Do I have a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. All right, we are adjourned. Good job.